So today is Sunday, the 21st of, 21st of uh, June, 2020. Uh, so today's topic is going to be of an adult theme. So in case you have uh, any children listening or it's on the big screen, I would suggest you make sure that there is nobody underage or someone who shouldn't listen to adult talk. It's about a, a girl in Dubai who resorted to sex um, just to get a job. And uh, basically, I had a conversation with her. So I'm just going to share with you on this. So it might be slightly explicit. Okay. Now, uh, uh, yesterday, as I was uh, finishing my my work, yeah, especially towards the evening, I'm exhausted. Okay, because the whole day I spend uh, speaking to clients or consulting or doing work or whatever. Okay, a lot of stuff goes on. So. I finished most of the work, uh, I was pretty exhausted, tired and towards the end of the day I was just uploading on my Instagram these new videos. If you go to my Instagram right now and check, you'll check a couple of photographs, no videos that I uploaded, intros for me, my wife, my baby, just cute little ones, okay, that I've uploaded also on YouTube. So I was doing that. And, uh, you know, I've started to get these friend requests on Facebook, which is quite a lot. I don't know. Every day I'm getting like five or sometimes even ten people I've never heard of. Okay. Add. But uh, only if it looks legit. It looks very one girl showing her tits or uh, some stupid name. No history, nothing. I forget it. So, okay, I've been adding these individuals, whoever, want to spy, want to follow, want to troll, whatever, just, okay. So, I've been getting these and uh, so as I was checking that, there was, um, I got this message. So, I got this message and uh, this female she starts uh, chatting with me, petite. Uh, so she said hi, I said hi. And then uh, she started speaking about my videos, about my videos and, and to my surprise, this girl has watched a lot of my videos because as we were chatting, she gave me a complete, uh, you know, breakdown of my history. She was telling me about, uh, when I told her I was married four times, she said, I know. When I told her I was a playboy, she said, I know. Everything I told her about my past, she said, yeah, I know. And she even added a few bits. When I was telling her my philosophies, like live life to the fullest and take each day as it comes, she said, I know. And she also gave me some of my added philosophies. So basically a girl who has been following me for quite some time uh, okay it's it was good so then as we were talking uh, she told me about her, her husband her family okay but then as she was talking to me about it the tough times and all that I just browsed through her Facebook so as I browsed through her Facebook I saw a couple of uh, nude photographs so I was like, okay, what is this? So then uh, I shared with her. I said, okay, so explain this to me. She, she, was, she gave me a very uh, kind of uh, parable kind of a reply, like a kind of a uh, poetic kind of response, like uh, no comments or uh, this is the reality of life or something like that. So I was like, okay. 
So quickly I understood that uh, this is a girl who offers sex for money because straight away I asked her, do you offer sex for money? She said, no comments. So well, it's not the first time I've bumped into a girl like that. So uh, means like that, by that I mean who is into, you know, I wouldn't say prostitution, but there are girls who if they like you, they will hang around with you, but uh, they'll make it very explicit that they have their, you know, list of requirements. Like you'll have to take them out, you'll have to do shopping for X amount of money. I know many of my friends in Dubai who, rich guys, they have these girls, like you call that term sugar daddy, where the girl agrees to go out with you, uh, sex or whatever is agreed. So you do it for a particular fee. Or you take, you go out with her, you buy her uh, clothes and whatever for, let's say, 2,000 dirhams. Shopping, take her for a good restaurant, food, and then you can have sex and enjoy the whole night. She can tell you, okay, I don't do anal or I don't do, you know, I don't do threesome or whatever. She can tell you and uh, uh, so end of the day, after you both finish, you drop her, she goes her way, you go your way. So there are arrangements like these. I know quite a number of guys who have such girls. From men who are 60 years old, who have girls who are 18. To the opposite way, where you have young boys who are 20, 24, 27. But they are filthy rich, but they like older women, like 40, 50 year old. I've seen both the sides. And in some cases where maybe there is no cash or money involved, but it's just free sex. Like you, whenever you meet, you want to have sex, you have sex, bye-bye. And there are these swinger Facebook groups where partners, they, they meet near a swimming pool for a barbecue or something. They just say, talk. If you like each other, you go start having sex. Someone can join in. Two, three guys can join in. Two, three girls can join in. Group sex, you finish. Okay. Pleasantries, bye-bye. There are also places where you can exchange your partners. Uh, some are in India. It's it's everywhere. Like, you come there invited only, you know, by invitation. All of you have your... Like, one of the games that I remember, this is when I was, I think, uh, 20 years old. One of my friends... Uh, he, uh, not friends, I was working for him. He told me that they have this par, you know, get together where all of them bring their keys, you know. Uh, they put it all in a bowl and uh, you close your eyes. Whichever key you get, uh, that person's spouse or girlfriend is yours for the night, you know, or for one hour, two hours, whatever. There are many videos like this and you can get it online. Okay. So, so it's nothing new. I've even met porn stars who wanted personal branding and uh, porn stars have told me, okay, I want this, I want that, you know. And uh, I've even had girls who, when they wanted their personal branding done, this is in Dubai, they would just say that, you know, really hot girls, attractive girls. Uh, is there anything I can do for you other than money? Straight off. And I'd be like, what are you talking like, what do you mean, like? She's like, you know, sex. So straight up. Some girls come explicit. I want to suck you, you know? Or, uh, so it's like both the ways, okay? Both the ways um, it has been. Now, with regards to this particular girl, so I saw a couple of uh, nude pics on Facebook, okay? So I asked her, what is this? She told me, no comments. But later on, as we were chatting, uh, she did tell me that she applied for a particular job. Okay. But in order to get through these three rounds of interviews, she had to keep three senior officials happy. So they booked a hotel room for a couple of days, like for the weekend. And uh, she had to satisfy each one. Okay, for three three days, three nights. Okay, whatever. 
one level, the next level, the third level, and finally she was given the job. So this is what she told me. Then I did mention this. I let her know. I let her know that uh, I'd be shining. She, I think she herself mentioned. So you'll be mentioning about it in the next video. I said, yeah. Uh, and she laughed. But, you know, kind of she knows that I wouldn't share her identity. And uh, she had not put her real name anyway on Facebook. So I just kept, I, I let her know that, uh, you know, I, I respected her. I had nothing uh, like treating her like shit or something. You know, she's a normal person. Okay. Uh, I did ask her that, uh, you know, sex must be more like uh, just a job for you. You must be like hating sex or hating men. So she told me, no, I don't hate men and uh, I don't hate sex. There are times where I enjoy sex, enjoy doing it. So I said, what do you enjoy doing? So then she was like, uh, oh, are we going to go to something like, she said, are we going to go to the second base or something like that? Uh, I said, I just ask questions, you know, for me, I enjoy asking questions. So she said, no, we'll do it for some other time or something like that. So she said, oh, you have not changed much. You're still the same that you were when you were in your 20s. So I told her, I, in my 20s, by now I'd be shagging four girls. Uh, today, I just limited to these chats. Yeah. So if a girl speaks something kinky, okay, enjoy it for some time. Or I might watch Pornhub, just jerk off. That's it. I mean, what's the point of going to a girl? Uh, so she's like, I don't believe you. So I sent her the, f I, I don't know if I did that, but I sent her the photograph of my wife and baby. And I said, uh, uh, I don't know if I sent her, this I don't remember, but I told her that I have two women in the house. I have a baby girl and I have a wife. Now, if I were to indulge in sex, it would be, you know, five minutes or 20 minutes or 15 minutes or half an hour max. Okay. After you finish the sex, you go back home. It was like you did exercise or whatever. But then if any time the wife were to find out, uh, you know, it would hurt them. It's not that my wife is going to divorce me or something. It would hurt her. She would cry, you know. And if she would cry, my small little baby girl sing my wife cry, my, my daughter would cry. So the question is for five minutes or 10 minutes of sex, is it worth making both of them cry for maybe days, weeks, months together? Is it worth it? Uh, you know, see, the thing is, it's not that I'm a saint and I told her this, I'm not a saint. If I were to go for an extended holiday or a business trip, say seven days or 10 days or one month. And uh, there was a massage parlor with a beautiful girl. Uh, might get a jerk, jerk off or whatever, you know? But then there's also the question that, you know, there's always a fear lingering back of the head. This girl might be infected. She might have an STD, then what? So it's not that I wouldn't go, yes. I would go that is provided uh, I am in a different place for say one week 10 days 15 days one month but it's not like I'm looking forward to it it's not like I want to do it it's not like oh you know when will I do this next I wouldn't plan it out or would it happen possibly will I want to make it happen I don't think so so I told her, this is the reason why I left Dubai, because as long as I stayed in Dubai, my life would be the same. So whether she believed me or she didn't believe me, it didn't matter. You know, she's not my wife. She's not my girlfriend. So she's just a person I met. There are people who believe me. There are people who don't. So then uh, I told her, I'm really getting tired. Okay. Because it was towards the end of the day. That's us chatting. Others, I don't get time. So after it finished, 
I say goodbye and all that. Uh, and then, uh, you know, my wife came and uh, she was putting my bed. You know, time for me to sleep. So I informed my wife about it. I told her, see, this is what it is. I showed her. My wife was like, oh, this is nothing new. This happens even in my village. There are these girls who, you know, uh, they come on camera. If you send them some money, they will show you nude pictures or they will, uh, you know, perform a, a, like a sex video on camera. So I was like, okay. Now, here's something interesting that happened. When... Uh, uh, when I mention this to my group, I have this adult group where all our horny sexual fellows are there. I mentioned it to them. So they're like, oh, wow, you know, so you're getting pussy for free and, you know, in exchange, what a great career, oh, whatever. But then no sooner that happened, I started getting private messages. Hey, man, can you give me her contact details? You know, I'm looking for someone. Uh, can I have uh, details? Can you send my details to her? You know, so the thing is, she didn't get in touch with me to hunt for customers. And the second thing is, I'm not a pimp who, okay, you go there, you go here. No, you find your own females. I'm not here to start exchanging females, contact numbers and all that shit. Okay. So that was another part. Then uh, I found this funny. One guy actually um, gets in touch with me, sends me a message. And says, oh, I feel sorry for these poor girls. You know, I would like to give her some money. So I was like, why do you want to give her some money? Saying, oh, it's a poor thing. Yeah, you know. There's a poor thing, you know, this and that, all soft story. I want to send her some money. So I said... You send me the money, I will send it to some really unfortunate person. Maybe an old lady, maybe an old man, maybe a small child for the education. Uh, I didn't think he liked the idea very much. He didn't want to give it to a guy. He didn't want to give it to a child. He didn't want to give it to an old person. He wanted to give it to a beautiful girl who was ready to show her naked body and so men normally like that. They tend to feel sorry for a cute, petite girl. But not for an old person or not for a child. We have our preferences. Some people might prefer to give for poor animals. But not human beings. So, but majority of the men, they go soft for females. So I kept going. Now comes the main thing is, what are my views about it? What do I feel? How do I evaluate this? Go. Do I feel sorry for her? Okay. First is I don't feel sorry for her at all. Sorry for what? Did she get raped? No. She willingly offered her body for sex. For cash. Now, in case you have not done the math, let me make you understand. Sex is a very lucrative industry. You know that girl who's an Australian racing girl who was racing a car? She was making hardly any money uh, by racing. She had a house, she had a mortgage of for 30 years. By getting into porn, within, uh, I think, six months or something, she's going to pay the entire mortgage of the house. And uh, to make you understand how much money is involved here, my wife, if she were to work in the rice farm, she will make around, uh, I think, $6, roughly 5 to $6 a day. Okay, 5 to $6. So in a month, you can make, uh, say, $150 or $180. You know, you can get the same amount of money in one hour. One hour of sucking cock, having someone ram their dick up your ass. You can make what what a person would make in one month, working eight hours with, you know, two hours of traveling, one hour of getting ready and one hour of traveling and coming back and the whole day, whole day goes working in the sun. So what you make in one month, 
you can make in one hour. Forget one hour, you can make it in a few hours. Having someone put something up your bum hole or your vagina or your mouth. Okay? For some people, it may be disgusting. But this is the reality. Why do you think so many girls love or want to get into the sex industry? We think that it's only oppressed or sad. Yes, there are PA cases in Bangladesh, Pakistan, India, poorer countries. But at the same time, there are plenty of girls and guys and in betweens who willingly go for this. I know, I personally know uh, people who love this industry. Like I've met, I've met these girls. They, they're like, hey, baby, you want to, you want to fuck? You want to fuck? You know? I'll do anything. You want to fuck in the ass? You want to fuck in the mouth? You want to fuck this thing? You want to come? You know? They, they will go try with you. They'll ask you. Then they'll go to the next one. Then they'll go to the next one. Then they'll go to the next one. Right in front of you. You know, you all want to fuck me? Come. And after they make the money, they'll smoke a cigarette. They'll wash themselves. They'll go at it again. And many of them, they like. They love alcohol. They love the good life. Do you know that some of these girls, they stay in five-star hotels. Five-star hotels. They have luxury cars. They have designer outfits. There's one, there's this particular girl. I won't tell you where. She has, I think, five or six sugar daddies. She comes from a good family, okay? This is a funny thing. She comes from a good family, but she doesn't want to work. She's very happy. She has five to six sugar daddies, old men, okay? Older than her, at least. And they send her close to, what, 20,000 dirhams a month. 20,000 dirhams just to be in touch, you know, just to keep in touch. This is not even the sex part is included. This is not even meeting them. And 20,000 a month. And they all know she has sugar daddies. If she meets and all that, this is what she told me. If they meet, she can make up to 100,000 a month. Just imagine. 100,000 a month. There are girls in Dubai who, when they go out with their boss for a business trip, uh, they get paid privately a lot of money. There are girls who openly say, I'll come out with you, provided you pay my ticket for travel, uh, you know, my food, a little bit of my shopping. We do everything together, but you don't mention on social media. There are girls like that. I know when I was in college in Mangalore, there were girls who were doing that. They came from respectable families. I know even doctors, doctors who were planning to graduate, they were offering for sex for money, you know. So it is an industry. So do I feel sorry? Absolutely not. She's a grown-ass woman. She knows what she's doing. And she knows the plus, the minus. Only thing which she told me is, yes, Arab men are a little rough, which I understood because they like anal. So they are a little rough and it's painful. But apart from that, uh, she makes, she's getting what she wants. It's a barter deal, you know. And if she doesn't do it, someone else will do it. So she says, okay, fine. Here, take my hole. Do what you want. Let me achieve my objectives. Now, they can put a very uh, altruistic or human uh, twist to it. I'm doing it for my mother. I'm doing it for my father. I'm doing it for my children. I'm doing it for my family, my husband. Well, let's, let's give you a different example. Let's say I start seducing women for sex. I, I start seducing women for sex and I make good money. And I tell you that I'm doing it for my wife, I'm doing it for my baby, I'm having sex. You'll say, grow the fuck up, do some proper work. So, if we have one particular standard for men, can't we have the same standard for women? You know? So, I don't feel sorry. This is the reality. You have to feel sorry. I'll be sorry for a child who has been bought and brought up and raised in an abusive house. I feel sorry for old parents. Those are the people I feel sorry who don't have a choice. Not for people who have a choice. Okay. Here, let me give you one last example. Here in Thailand, if you come to Thailand or Samui or Pattaya, you'll see very, very, very old men. Very old men. To the point where this guy might collapse and die. 60, 70, 80 year old. Hardly being able to walk. 
fat, really fat, with hair all over his stomach, and his stomach is so big, it it might be like he has never seen his penis for ages. This kind of guy, so fat, maybe 80, 90, 100 kilos, you'll see him with a girl who is hardly like 50 kilos, really beautiful, young girl, 18 year old, 19 year old, you'll see a beautiful girl, really beautiful. And when you see it from far, you'll think this is his daughter, okay? But then, on closer inspection, you realize this is his girlfriend or wife. And you'll be like, oh, the poor thing, oh, she's, she's so oppressed. Let me give you another side to it. On these uh, Facebook groups, they have Facebook groups, these girls, they actually discuss strategies of how to trap old men. They actually discuss, huh? they share. My wife has shows me, my wife had shown me this. So what they tell you is, when the farang, the foreigner comes, you know, just act like a small school girl, hold his hand, uh, you know, put your head on his shoulder, sit next to him, let him take his arm and put it on your inner thigh, touch him, hold him, hug him, tell him I miss you. Uh, tell him bye-bye, tell him when you're coming back. When they go out, tell them that you don't have money for cab. Tell them uh, you want to eat outside. Tell them my mother's sick. In fact, the famous joke in Thailand is, my buffalo is sick. Uh, when you say buffalo is sick, the guy will give money for the buffalo's operation. My buffalo is sick or my mother's sick, my father's sick or operation. I've, I've seen this, I've heard it. I know it. So they are taught all these strategies and by the time they finish like two, three years, they are masters at this. That is why if you go to any bar, uh, any bar, you'll see these girls. They have like five phones, six phones, smartphones. They have five to six smart devices, each one having its own Facebook account. And each one, the guy will believe that this is exclusively hers. And you know, the guys, some of them are idiots. So they take their password and say, I don't believe me, give me your password, I want to check. So they check and they find, oh, there's nothing here. What the idiot doesn't know is, this girl has maybe 12 Facebook accounts, 12 different names on 12 different smartphones. And that is why when they sit in the bar, they'll be texting to all the 12. You know, they send their nude pictures to all the 12 separate. This is a business, man. And people have to do this for survival. There is one guy who has a lot of money. There's another person who wants his money. So the guy who earns the money, well, sometimes because he is working in the West, the currency value is much more higher when you exchange. But the person in a poor country is very sharp and knows, I need this foreign exchange. So the guy might be earning a uh, minimum wage but for a poorer country, this minimum wage is worth, you know, 30 times more. So, overall, it's like, uh, this is not something to feel sorry or sad. or This is a barter exchange. It's business. I have something you want. You have something I want. Make a fair deal. That's as far as it goes. This is a reality of life, man. I have not been a saint. I have myself. I myself have had sex with the uh, females who are very rich. Well, they. I knew what I was getting into. I was not attracted to them. They had good money. And they gave me. Fuck, imagine you go out with this girl for a date and she gives you like, you know, $4,000, $5,000. Here, baby, take. Uh, you can pay me whenever you like. Ah, why not? Yeah, you have good sex, plus you get the money, and you enjoy. Yeah. I told you, I, I'm not uh, any fucking saint, and I don't give a fuck. This is the reality of life, whether you accept it or not. There are girls who have openly told, there are parents who have you know, approached me for personal branding, and then they've told my daughter is thinking of moving into the porn industry, or sex industry, or my daughter has this rich boyfriend who buys her things, and she's getting addicted to this lifestyle. What can you do? This is life. 
you know if a girl is bringing what she can earn in one year she brings it in few days and gives it to the parents and say you can buy an expensive house or you can have a good life if the parents will say no shit well there are parents who will say no i prefer earning uh, even if i eat only one piece of bread i want it to be with self respect and then there are others who say you do what you want it's your life your your choice and then there are others who even force their children i when i was on thai cupid i got this lady who was actually pimping out her 9 year old daughter and telling me do you want this girl seriously i was like what the fuck is this she put the girl on camera and said do you want this girl good 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 girl so i've seen all this i fucking reported that female immediately i sent it to different people and told them please report it to the police so now now in india when the lockdown what do you think indian females are doing so many so many of them i'm not saying uh, everyone there are quite a number they will and the way they talk chut dekhna hai aur yeah kya something gaan dekhna hai aur something like that and then they'll show fuck they look fucking ugly man Eesh. and then they'll show the sagging boobs and and they'll show vagina and say uh send 100 rupees i'll show you one more thing there are guys who just pollute the whatsapp group with all this don't even get time i hey, sometimes when i check 4000 messages 6000 messages i just clear them all i don't get time to see all this so it's the same fucking shit but some guys are addicted to it they love this so anyway so spoke to her chatted with her you know i told her if i want to enjoy i can go out right now nobody can stop me not interested just so fucking busy man what the fuck has time for all this shit it's you know when you're 40 your priorities change man you don't think of oh let me get someone to suck my sausage you know you think of other things in life you know there are so many other things to life and then when you have uh, priorities of taking care of your wife and kid to be honest with you i enjoy my walks i enjoy playing my game i enjoy closing a deal enjoy making fuck loads of money more than i enjoy sex seriously you will you may or may not believe this my wife herself says you know my wife herself tells you like what kind of playboy are you you hardly have sex she has told me that you hardly have sex because my main focus at this age is making money maybe because i took steroids and you know my testosterone levels are down maybe that's why i don't feel so much of sex but i'm glad i'm really glad that i'm i'm not so interested in sex because it helps me focus and uh, i've spoken to my wife i asked her do you feel bad she said no i'm glad because at least you're not addicted to going outside with other girls you don't smoke you don't drink you know don't do all this shit so yeah guys this is what it is spoke to her chatted with her and uh, that's that's what i kept it at what is my message to her i don't know let's live your life <laughs> do whatever do whatever it is remember there is a price to pay for everything we do and uh, you know you have a short span to make money so save save your money make the right choices don't fucking make the wrong choices that's it life goes on so this is what i wanted to share with you let me know your thoughts in the comments below this is not just the reality of uae this is a reality of everywhere in the world everywhere okay so it's me signing off you guys take care don't you hate it when that happens to you when it does you need this and this and this when it happens to me i always know where to go when you've got professionals on your side your problems don't stand a chance What are you waiting for? Contact them today and let them take care of your problems. <laughs>